All right, folks, welcome back to the series. So when we left off, we had given ourselves the ability to add products uh, in our application. And if you haven't done so already, just add a add two, three, four, whatever, just so we have something to work with. Because what I would like to do today is fix the products page from just the placeholder to actually displaying a card of each one of the products that we enter. And then eventually we'll be able to click on these and go to the, to the add product page, which will also edit them. Uh, but we'll work on that in a future video. Now to get started before you boot up, I do want to bring in a package for the part of the application we'll be doing today, which is the INTL or international package. Uh, and what this will allow us to do is just, just to easily format the currency that we're going to put on our card. So I will go to installing, grab that, and I'm going to put it into pubspec.yaml. And then I'm going to close out this uh, source code and I will reopen the emulator with our current project. So I'll go here to pubspec.yaml after UUID. We'll add that in. I'm going to save it. Uh, and then I'm going to stop this emulator and restart it with my project code. All right, so this is where we left it last time. Hopefully you have in your Firebase, uh, Firestore database, you've added some products here. And what we want to do is get these products and display them here on the screen. So we're going to need to address our Firestore service and give ourselves a way of grabbing those products. Now, we don't want to grab all the products. Uh, well, currently we do. But in an application setting, we want to grab just those products that relate to us as a vendor. And so when we write our service, we want to write a service that has a where clause that gets products just for the vendor that is active. And so let's go to our services and we just have one, we have Firestore service. And let's come down here below add product and let's do it there. So what we wanna do is pass out a stream uh, with a list of all the products for that vendor. So it will be of type stream uh, of a list and a list of type product. And we'll call it fetch products by vendor ID. Kind of a long name, but we'll know exactly what we mean by that. So we're gonna pass in a vendor ID And all right, to our query. So we want to return and we want to grab that database instance and we want to go to a collection and that collection is products. So we know that part. Uh, I'll go down to the next line for the query. So at this point, we're in the collection and we want to query just those vendor IDs that match the one we're passing in. So we can do a where clause on our stream. We can tell it the name of the field as a string, so we're gonna query on vendor ID. We want to check if that is equal to that will autocomplete, but it's sometimes very slow. If you come back to it, if you have doubts, it should uh, autocomplete the next time. Uh, so there's our where clause. Let's just see here. Yeah, so now we have access to all the different equality statements that we can pass in there. So we want is equal to the vendor ID and we can take futures, we can take snapshots, which are streams, and so we'll take snapshots. And now the tricky part, we want to start mapping this into a list of products. So first of all, let's do a map and let's get our query results. We're gonna get back a series of documents. So we wanna grab those out of the query, query.documents. 
And then we want to map each one of those, and that's a snapshot. So we'll take that snapshot. And we want to map that snapshot and we want to grab the document object off that and that's going to have our data so then we can cast that data into a product using our from firestore method that we created in our model so product dot from firestore document dot data and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a semicolon there and I think that will get rid of errors so I can at least code format that clean it up a little bit uh, we're not done though we haven't actually cast this to a list and this is not able to kind of pick that up so come inside of the last parentheses and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna cast it to list like that and that will give us a streaming list of products so we get you can see here query snapshot that contains a documents property so then we can get a list of document snapshots so then when we map each one of those we get a snapshot then we can go and get our document and our document dot data from that so kind of a tricky little mapping process to do there to get that from a query to a list but that is how it's done all right, so flipping back to our products page, which is in widgets products. Uh, we don't really have anything here for a page body other than products. And you may notice if you, if you scan up and down the code, uh, if we are going to call the query here to get our list of products, we don't actually have the vendor's ID in this widget and so we need some strategy for passing out or getting the the, the vendor id uh, at will and so i'm going to do that in the auth block and what i'm going to do is we have a user object which is streaming and we could grab that stream and we could bring that into this products widget and we could set up a stream builder that reads it uh, but we could also just make life easier on ourselves and add ourselves a getter that just passes out the value of the current user ID. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get to a string getter. So a string get user ID and I'm just going to pass out the value user dot value and the user ID. And you might be saying, why don't we just do that? everywhere well the downside of that is that if we are putting this user id into our user interface and it changes uh, there's nothing to indicate to the ui that this value has changed and it won't rebuild and so in this instance where we just want to get the log in uh, value for the string to pass to a database uh, this will work fine but where we're putting these values into UI, uh, we do need a stream because we need to constantly tell Flutter, you, you need to update this value. We've changed it and it's time to refresh the UI because Flutter is not looking to frivolously refresh the UI. It needs to know uh, why it should do that. And we do that through streams and uh, change notifier providers, stuff like that. Just getting a string won't do that, but that's okay. We just need the user ID to pass to the database. And so we're just going to do a string getter for user ID. Now, since we're here in our blocks, why don't we flip over to product block and let's think about uh, getting those that list of products from Firestore to our user interface. We could go to this products page and we could directly call the Firestore service if we wanted to to get that list but we've generally been using the block as our intermediary. We haven't made, uh, at least that I'm conscious of, any direct calls from the user interface to the Firestore service. We've used our blocks as interceptors. So let's, let's stay consistent with that pattern. And so let's go into our product block and let's give ourselves a getter to get the results of that Firestore query. And so up here are, are the getters. And so here I'm going to stream a 
Oh, let's line that up better. Stream a list of products. And I'm going to call it products by vendor ID. And I'm going to require you to pass in the string, which is the vendor ID. And to get that stream, all I'm going to do is point to database fetch provider or fetch products by vendor ID. And then I will just give it the vendor ID. So all we're doing is referencing, referencing our Firestore service there. But now we can call for that list of product IDs by interacting with our product block, which we already are going to be doing uh, in that page anyway. All right, now flipping back to our widgets products page, we can bring both of these blocks in because we're, we know that we're going to need both of them. So let's go inside our build method and let's do a var product block. And we'll set that equal to provider of context. Product block. Do an import there. We'll do a var auth block. That's where we'll get our vendor ID from. We'll be provider dot of context. And that will be of type auth block. All right, we've given ourselves access to a lot of our business logic there. So down in page body, we have nothing but a centered placeholder. And so let me shrink this up a little bit. We're going to want a list of our products. And so let's take out the center and let's return ourselves a list view. And we'll do the list view builder because we're going to be dynamically building this. Move that down to the next line. Um, I'm going to come up above and I'm going to do item count first. And I need to bring in some uh, records here. And I'm going to need to stream this because I'm going to be asking for a uh, stream from a block. So I'm going to wrap it with a stream builder and I'm going to fill in the object type is going to be a list of our products. Uh, there we go. And we need to bring in product. And so the stream will be our product block. Products by vendor ID. And so we have a product block, let's see, up here. We don't actually have access to it here that I'm aware of. So let's pass in product block. So we'll pass that in. Um, we're going to need a context for this builder here. So let's pass in a build context. We'll just call it context. And we're going to need the vendor ID. And let's resolve that up top and pass in the actual string of vendor ID. Like that. And so in our page body, we need to pass those three things in. So we'll pass product block, we'll pass context, and we will pass auth block dot user ID. And we can copy that and just paste it right into the page body in our second scaffold. Like that. All right, so I don't want item extent there. I want item count. And the count is going to be snapshot.data.length. All right, now. Before I go too far there, if my snapshot happens to be still resolving, I want to show a spinner. So if not snapshot dot has data, uh, I want to say if or not that I want to do return. In fact, I don't really need these curly braces. 
if there's no data, I want to return uh, a spinner, but we'll do it by platform. So I'll first ask platform is iOS. And if it is iOS, we're going to return a Cupertino activity indicator. And if it is not iOS, we will return a circular progress indicator like that. Oh, I got my comma in there. Semicolon there. All right, so that gives us some uh, something to put on the screen if the list of our products is not ready yet. We've got an item count, which will be the length. And so we need a builder. And so inside the builder, we put a context and we want an index and we want to open up some curly braces. And this is where we build our items. Just going to add that semicolon, get rid of that red. And so what do we want to pass in here? Well, let's start with just a text widget so we can see that this is working. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to create a variable called product because I don't want to type oops, product. I don't want to type snapshot dot data index over and over again. Can't even type it once. There we go. All right, so let's start with just returning a text, which is the product.name or product name. And we'll save that. Let's see, I'm getting an error there. The product by vendor ID isn't defined for the class product. Let me, uh, let me just do a hot restart there and see if that resolves that issue. And it does. So that was just a state problem. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five. I put six products in here. And so I'm getting the list of names, which is good, uh, but not very pretty. So let's go ahead and wrap this one here. And then next time we'll come back and we'll create the card to display the items. As always, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time.